Welcome to the More Than Just Dumbbells podcast. My name is Jason Lindsay. My name is Kitty Truex. It is welcome back. It welcome. Thank you for having me, Kitty. It is two, pleasure. It is the year of our Lord, as they say, 2022. Double deuce. And I thought it was a leap year, and it's not. 2020 was a leap year. 2020 was a leap year. Because I thought, man, wouldn't it be a good idea for Power Block, who had really had a lot of success with uh, Black Friday sale, do, to do a leap day sale. But they can't because it'll, it'll be 2024 then. Can I give you a little uh, lowdown on leap day quick? You can. So back in the day, leap day was the only day that women could ask men to marry them. Like, that was the uh, like legal. like without getting stoned. Like, or yes, what? Like, you know, back in the day. Yeah. Uh, so they got it every four years. Was like the day of the goddess, the day of the woman. So thanks, it, thanks for giving us one every four years. So many questions that brings up. <laughs> but but the but I'll but it okay. Does in the United States of America, yes. w- where we live, what percentage of women ask men to get married? That's a great question. Less than one. You think so? Yeah. Okay. I'm talking about women to men, heterosexual, just to keep, you know. Sure. Okay. Just yeah. to keep the box yeah. tiny. Yep. It's got to be less than 1%. Oh. Please email us. Yes. Podcast at powerblock.com. If, if you know the answer. If you've asked your, if you're a female and you asked a male to get married. I would love to know those stories. Who asked? Did you ask Ryan to get nope. married? He asked me. Yeah. You were. On Valentine's Day. That's okay. Yeah. It was great. No, In but Mexico. That, yeah. But that's. But you know what? People say that's cliche, but that's how it should be. It's Valentine's Day. It's a stupid holiday, but I get it's there. I mean, it's, you know. The holiday of Eros and Aphrodite. Yeah. Nobody cares. Nope. So, so <laughs> <laughs> I do. So, so Kitty, I'm excited today because we have who? Natalie Newhart. And why should I be excited about Natalie Newhart? Natalie Newhart, actually, when I looked her up, First of all, she's a phenomenal personality. She's okay. a beast. Yeah. And she really is good at what she does. She's okay. been through a lot of trial, a lot of tribulation, okay. a lot of stress. Okay. And she really knows how to help women yeah. to stop stressing about losing weight, about what they're putting in their yeah. mouth, and starting to look at more instead of instead of beating yourself up all the time, yeah. really switching your mindset okay. to be with ease and calm um, and self-discipline and self-control. Okay. Which a lot of women yeah. have been taught such so, such different things about their body, and she works with predominantly women over the age of thirty five. Okay, she has some things about menopause, about PCOS, about adrenal fatigue, you all of these cool then. things. Shut your hole. Barely, but you but do. No, I don't. Yeah, okay. I don't. I'm <laughs> so, not there yet. Does she? <laughs> does she have? Uh, is she an online personal trainer? She coach? is correct. So that okay. So we'll talk about that. Yep. So so if people listening could benefit from her by you know it, whether they have to pay or not whatever. But I'm sure she's got free resources. She does. She has a uh, a bunch of free resources. Fat loss cheat sheets, all that stuff. She's got a YouTube channel that's fantastic. So her I mean her website's fitaddictednutrition.com. So she's big into food and nutrition. Yes. This is great. She used to actually, it, and I'm I'm really looking forward to asking her about this. She had a really bad eating disorder, yeah. like obsessive compulsive eating disorder, tracking macros so ridiculously that. I mean, it, it got in the way of her results and her mm, mindset. Mm, it really, mm. I mean, it, it was crazy. It, it was amazing. Do you know how old she is? I don't. I don't know off the top of my head. I'd like to ask her that too. But I mean, if she's helping women over 35, she's probably in that category. I would say so. Yeah. Yep. Well, let's get, should we get her on? Yeah. She's a professional athlete. She's a coach, nutrition person. I'm looking forward to having her on. Let's dial her let's up. Let's do it. Come, we'll be right back with Natalie Newhart. Boom. Because it Coach Nat. Coach Nat, chat with Nat. We're about then, to chat with Nat. And then we're going to have trivia with Nat. So That's right. We got our hands full. Of course, I already talked to Dan, and he made it sound like I had no chance this week. Oh, thank gosh. Oh, gosh. But he goes- I'm, I'm done with he you. Was, but I'm hang, done with you. But hang on. He goes, well, they're a really hard question. I go, oh, so then Kitty? Oh, yeah. You're darn right. <laughs> Let's we'll get right her on. Back. You're listening to the More Than Just Dumbbells podcast sponsored by PowerBlock. After the show, head on over to powerblock.com and you'll find a wide range of adjustable dumbbells and resources to help you build a new you in 2022. We're Powerblock, your resolution solution. And now, back to the show. Kitty, we're back. We've got... Well, got her. We got coach. We've got her, Coach Nat. I think she goes Chat by with Nat. N- Natalie We're Newhart. With Nat. You can find yeah. her at fitaddictednutrition.com. You can find her on Instagram, a lot of places. How you doing today, Nat? I'm doing great. How are you? Doing awesome. Awesome. It's Good. great to have you. I, I had a great deep dive on you, sister. What a phenomenal oh, yeah. personality you are. Aw, thanks, dude. I Appreciate forget. That. I forget how we got connected. Did I? Was it like through like a? Do you remember how we got connected, Nat? Well, I'm pretty sure 
Alexa, uh, one of the guys Alexis? over at Operation Podcast reached out to you. Okay, got it. I want right. to say that yeah. sounds that sounds accurate. Cool. Well, let's 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 dive into let's. who who Nat is. Do you, where are you at right now? What part of the country? What part of the world are you? Where are you at, Nat? Yeah. So I live in Colorado. I live up in the mountains. I next to mm. all the ski resorts. My boyfriend and I we own a snowboard team. And, uh, and so we really follow the snow everywhere. Um, he coaches snowboarding while I help women uh, create the most fulfilling lives and um, bodies possible. What part of Colorado? So it's Summit County, so like Frisco, Colorado. So it's right next to Copper, Brack, Keystone, mm-hmm. A-Basin, all those. We have like five of them within 15 minutes of us. What a, yeah, what a wonderful. What a heck of a life. Did you, Sounds awesome. Where did you yeah. grow up now? Yeah. So I grew up in California. Hmm. Um, I, I probably spent, you know, about half my life down there. Um, and then once I once I got in Colorado, I, I never wanted to leave. And you specialize in helping women over 35 to master their body by mastering their mind. Is that an accurate way to say it? Yeah. You know, I kind of bounce around, to, like, how do I phrase it? I basically help women that yeah are about like definitely over 30 and typically more over 35 um that are really doing all the right things right so i'm not working with you know extremely overweight women i'm working with women that are already exercising already eating well they're doing all the right things and they're still not losing weight Mm -hmm. and i i really enjoy working with these women because they like they have the discipline they're the ones showing up every single day and they deserve to have a body that reflects all their hard work and yet they don't and the reason for that is because as they age that that mentality of just work harder eat less you know you know work harder in the gym it doesn't work anymore they have to start to shift their focus onto taking on a more calmer lifestyle like stress management stress is literally like a wall a barricade that's blocking them from Mm. seeing any results from all their effort that they put into their diet and workouts. And this is a big issue because I mean, like this is a, this is changing your way of being right. Mm -hmm. Because so Mm. many women that I work with, they're very type a go, go, go. And for me to tell them, okay, like we need to like sit still, (laughs) you know, and do some breath work that scares the shit out of them, you know? (laughs) Um, and so, and I used to be there. And so I literally help, I help them. I train them how to relax again. I teach them how to relax so that they see, they can start seeing those results from all their effort. And so it's, it's, you know, it's basically Mary or Perry, um, perimenopausal women, you know, like so 35 to postmenopause type women. Yeah. Fascinating. So if, if I'm hearing you right, you know, translating that, that is that oftentimes, a plateau or, or somebody not being able to get to where they want to get to has a lot to do with stress. Um, and, and that's where you come into play. So without giving away trade secrets, you know, how, how do you get a type A female to, mm. to sit still? Yeah, you take small steps, but I mean, the th- first thing that I, before I let anybody, before I, before I take any client on, they have to be in a certain amount of pain like before because the work that we're going to do they need to be so fed up with where they're at that they're willing to just do whatever anything like do whatever it takes and i need them there so i need them to just be in a place where they're no longer willing to just continue to suffer the way that they are Mm. and when they're there they will they you know yes it's going to be hard but they have that that, like the pain of staying the same is worse than and than trying to do yes. something new. So well said. Yeah. Now I actually looked into you had some eating disorders, right? I mean, we as females, things are ingrained into our mindset with diets, with past things we've been told. How would you begin to work with a client on overcoming those roadblocks um, that are literally ingrained and imprinted into yeah. us growing up? Yeah, it's a lot of education. Really, so my my entire program is like a year long, and every single week is a new lesson of how those things, um, those behaviors and beliefs got imprinted in your mind, in your brain, in your nervous system. The fear around food, the FOMO with food, the anxiety with food, the fear of uh, not of, of taking a rest day. Like we go into how that all that stuff began, so that they understand. Oh. 
this is just a pattern. This is just an imprint that I have trained unknowingly. And when they realize that, then they start to realize, okay, then I can start to train myself out of it. And then we, and we get to work, right? So every single week is a new drill, a new awareness, a new skill that we practice so that we can start training ourselves out of those patterns and into the patterns that are going to get us to where we want to go. Mm. Yeah. So can you very well needed, by the way, you, very yeah, needed. you, um, well, well, Natalie, you so you did you had an eating disorder? You, oh, you can call it that. Yeah, okay. it's, it was just messed up. Do you want to talk a little I mean, bit I about that? I saw pictures. You don't. You didn't even look like you do now, in those pictures. Yeah. yeah, I mean the like what happened is I you know I I basically applied a um it was from like after CrossFit I was applying my CrossFit Games mentality mm. to a bodybuilding diet. Mm. Okay, mm. and um so I was training five six hours a day. Um, you know, and, and I was on an 800 calorie diet when I mm. took on bodybuilding and what that created was nobody told me that I was, you know, signing myself up for this, but, uh, really weird, obsessive relationship with food. Um, mm. and I ended up, uh, I created, so this is interesting because what, when that happened, like I created this imprint, this pattern within me, um, where I, I just, I like, it, it became like I never had enough. And so I like, like there was never going to be another chance to have it. And so I would pull food out of trash cans. I would steal food from the grocery stores. Mm -hmm. I would stop by grocery stores. There was one, uh, my worst. I was stopping by five grocery stores on my way home mm -hmm. simply to go to the trail mix aisle, steal food from there. And then, you know, and there were other, you know, I also opened, I was that person that opened bags, right? Um, because I couldn't trust myself to bring them home. Yeah, it was mm. just, it was totally messed up, dude. And and this, wow. you're talking about somebody who's, I'm, I'm pretty damn disciplined, you know? Like I've, I've, I've been one of the best athletes in the world. And for me to go to get to a point where I honestly, I couldn't even stay at home alone, mm. right? I, I couldn't even trust myself to be in the house alone, uh, to be around food. I would lock myself out of my my own house and not even bring my wallet because I didn't trust myself to to go buy food or like it was just it was messed up. I just I created this um this obsession with food. It was always on my mind and then what I did is I tried to work it off because I was a nutrition coach at the time. So I um would find myself at the gym two, three, four times a day. You wow. know, and yeah. And so that was the eating disorder and what what happened is all that stress um, it, uh, it, it took a toll on me and there was a point where I ended up, I was actually eating, I was tracking my food. I was e eating perfectly clean. Um, but I was just, I was just training so hard and I ended up gaining 20 pounds in two months because of stress, not because of too much food. And that's when I realized, oh shit, you know, like stress, um, it can make you fat too. People talk a ton about how food makes you fat and don't eat this and don't eat that, but not enough people are talking about the impacts that stress has, or maybe they are, but you don't really understand the the degree of that mm -hmm. until until you start to take stress off your system. Really, it's almost like you were punishing yourself in a oh, way. Yeah. And I, I I watched a lot of your YouTube videos. You have a phenomenal YouTube channel. And I, I actually heard you say something about your body is the result of small things done over time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you you help women to change their mindset as to you get to work out rather than you have to work out. Right. So, you know, and I know myself included, we're no notorious for never thinking we do enough in the gym. And if it doesn't kill me, then it doesn't, it's not worth it. Right. So right. how would you work with one of your clients on kind of flipping that mindset as to you get to work out rather than you have to or, you know, schlepping into it? Yeah. Well, so, I mean, there's, there's a whole system to it, but you know, you first start off with the vision, like what is the vision, um, or who's the person that I need to become, right? Who's the person that not only do I want to become, but I need to become in order to achieve a, a fit body with a balanced lifestyle where I truly, I'm somebody, um, that just thoroughly enjoys the gym and has control around food. Um, and you know, like what, what, what sort of skills, what sort of habits do I need to embody? And part of that is, Hey, I've got to have a true authentic love for the gym. Like I, 
you know, the, the, if you look, the answers are everywhere if you look at them, right? It's just that we surround ourselves with people that think just like us. But if you look mm. at people who are like just naturally fit, they they don't look at workouts as like a workout. They actually see it as movement, and they go they go hike and they kayak and they they go out in nature. And they, when they when they think about doing these things, they light up with joy, yes, and inspiration and passion. Like they just can't wait to get off work to go do that stuff, right? Like that's that is the quality that is the a skill that we must train with 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 movement and you know in the gym and that's something that ne- can be trained the the only reason why you feel like you have to do it a certain way and it's never enough is is because you've taken on that belief and you've trained that within yourself mm-hmm. that the mind just starts that it just automatically thinks that it's what you know and so we we can use that and leverage the way that the mind, um, you know, the way that we think and feel by training the way that we need to feel. We can train love with the gym. We can train passion with the gym. We can mm-hmm. train inspiration because emotions and thoughts work just like a muscle. The more you think it, the more it occurs in your mind. The more you feel it, the more it occurs in your mind. This is why so many people like that, you know, are very highly anxious. They didn't just wake up with that anxiety. They train that way of being, whether they know it or not. Hmm. Happy people didn't just wake up happy. They 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 train that way of being either from, you know, maybe they learned it from their parents how to think like a happy person, you know. And as a result, like you know, typically, like there's a whole set of like behavior that goes with that, right? Hmm. Like in a in a body that goes with that. Happy people are they move a certain way, they talk a certain <clears throat> way, they tend to be more you know passionate and. You know, and then stressed out people or sad people, they move a certain way. They Absolutely. talk about the pain. They talk about how much shit they got to yeah. do and they don't have enough time. And as a result, they they don't they have high cravings. They eat when, mindlessly. They eat when they're not hungry. And and that creates a particular body for them and a ex- certain life. Yeah. 100%. So, so Coach Nat, we just we recorded a podcast on New Year's resolutions mm-hmm. um, recently and you know, the, I, I, in doing research on it, I, I found some experts, I guess they'd call themselves, that say that, you know, there's 21 days habit type thing, but there's maybe six months it takes to if, for something to become part of your personality. Do you, how do you feel about that, that amount of time? Like you just said, you know, certain people just, I mean, they, they don't, they don't wake up and say, I want to go do something healthier or, or for my fitness today, but you're trying to get them to be that person. Do you mm-hmm. think do you think that six month mark is, is is accurate or is it is it more than that just that just the time? Um, I would say it takes more like a year. To, okay. I mean, the, that's, that's why, why your I program's require, a year, yeah. Yeah, that's why I require a year because, I mean, here's the thing: is that transformation can happen in an instant. Once you decide, hey, this is who I'm going to be, great, like that can happen in an instant. But to be to master that is going to take time, right? Um, and so, and we really, again, like we need to train the nervous system. We need to train the mind to do that on our behalf. And the only way that's going to come is through repetitive effort, mm-hmm. right? And c- consistent Discipline. conscious effort. And so the thing is you can't, you're not conscious of your thoughts and the way that you feel a hundred percent of the time, <clears throat> right. the more that you are though. Yeah, you'll probably get a lot further in six months, right? right. But a lot of the times, yeah. you know, life takes us, we get distracted and we're like, oh, man, I'm stressed out again. So like, how much time did right. you go unaware that you were thinking about how you're not doing enough and how you have so much to do, like, or why you don't love the gym? Like, we got to be on, We the quicker you are, the more aware you are about that, the the more you can train that repetition of, of that way of being. Kind so of taking the thought and know? being like, mm, nope, I wanted to go this exactly. way instead. Yes, 90 degree turn exactly. type stuff. Now, yeah. I see Fit Addicted Nutrition in your background, and I know you mm-hmm. have the Fit Addicted Academy, you have the Fit Sheet community, and I also, looking at your Instagram, saw that you have red days, yellow days, and green days. Mm-hmm. Um, can yeah. you tell us just a little tiny bit about what that feels like or looks like in your program yeah, and what those may, might mean? Yeah, so like when I first um, kind of made this transition, I needed some type of structure. Like I, when I had to realize like, okay, I, I had to break free from the like the obsession of working harder all the time, thinking that that was the answer. And so I needed some type of structure where I was like, okay, I'm gonna I, I need days where I'm gonna work hard so I can get my fix, and also you know working hard is good, but I need days where I'm also just like pulling back, you know, and then days where I absolute rest. 
and um, you know, and I and I'm training, you know, training the mind. And so I, I labeled them as green, yellow, red, just like a stoplight. Mm -hmm. So green days, hey, we hit it hard. Like let's let's you know lift heavy, let's go hard, let's do longer workout. Um, on those days, that's where we eat more, train more. Okay, so we eat more food and we train a bit longer, but and and harder. Um, and then yellow days, you know, like just like the stoplight, we pull back. Okay, and so we. I kind of look at them as just more like play days, you know, like we just, you know, we're going in, we're lifting weights, we do maybe five, 10 minutes of, of hit, and then we're doing about 30 minutes or so of, of strength, and we eat some, train some there, okay? Um, and so the, the amount of food that we're eating equates, you know, is balanced out with, with the amount of training. And then red days are peace out days, um, where we, we really just move the body lightly. We do a lot of soft training, okay? So like, basically like, you know, green days are hard training, yellow days are medium training, red days are soft training. Soft training meaning like training the internal uh, self, the internal muscles, training set place, uh, you know, accessing states of calm, deeper states of calm and tranquility, um, you know, and, and then on those days we eat less, train less, mm -hmm. okay? So mm -hmm. we eat less. And so not that that serves quite a few different things like um you know first off it doesn't put you know it 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 it, it gives you some type of structure for women <laughs> which they love and then not only that but it it it's um it jiggles the metabolism back and forth so you have high days and low days of food and also high days and low days of training and so the body keeps responding really well rather than getting stagnant um and uh and yeah just you know it cycles your carbs so you get good at burning carbs and building muscle and you also get really good at burning fat so mm. the metabolism stays really flexible um and it, you know it takes stress off the body because you're taking those red days you know and and using that time to still train but you're training in a different way and i also as a woman i also saw that you you work with the the moon cycle of a, their men's, menstrual cycle mm -hmm. as well yeah and that's massive I mean, the fact that you can plug into that as well on top of what you're already doing, I, I'm interested. I want to work with Nat. Mm -hmm. Coach Nat. Coach yeah. Nat. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a really great tool that women should leverage. I don't see why not if you still have your period because you only have your period for a certain amount of time. Um, and, you know, it gets a lot harder to build the body when you lose, lose that period. So, um, when you're yeah when you're training with the menstrual cycle you can build muscle and you can burn fat faster and you can really target certain areas um because when you know there's certain times of the month when estrogen is really high mm -hmm. and when it's high um the body really clings to fat around the 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 hips and um butt thigh area and uh and so we can really shape you know because that's where you can get kind of like that pear shape for women and so you can really you know target in on that um, through certain times of, of the menstrual cycle. And you can also target belly fat on women mm. during certain times of the menstrual cycle. Fantastic. So um, yeah, it's super, it's it's a cool tool that I think more women should, you know, would want to leverage if they knew about it. So if you're like me and they, you want to work with Natalie, what are the options to do yeah. that and where would I find you? Yeah, yeah um, the best way to find me, if you want to just kind of learn about my uh, methodology is my Instagram account, which is at natalie.newhart. Hmm. Um, otherwise, if you'd like to book a call with me, you can go to talktonat.com. So talktonat.com. Um, and then you can also just kind of check out my website, which is fitaddictednutrition.com. On there, I, yeah. I post about my retreats. Um, I've got different protocols that you can get. Um, you got some and, fat loss yeah. cheat sheets on your link tree as well, I saw. Yeah. yeah. A bunch yeah. of cool stuff. It's yeah, awesome, <clears throat> Natalie. You probably don't even know that we're going to do this, hmm. but we're playing in a fun little trivia game. We always play trivia at the end. And are you up okay. for a little trivia game with and us? I'm not so great at trivia, but let's do it. Yeah, well, neither are Kitty and neither. I, so don't <laughs> so don't worry about it. It's we're on the same playing field. But, but we're you know we're going to have you back on again in the future. But that was great for now. Very very uh, very helpful. I think our listeners are going to love that. So we'll do the oh. trivia and then we'll we'll kind of say so long and let you get on to the rest of your day. Sounds good. All right. You ready, Dan? I'm ready. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Natty, you ready? Yeah. All right. It's time now for the Fitness Inquisition. I bet she's never had this on a podcast before. No, I ever expect that Fitness Inquisition. 
All right, here's how it's going to work. I've got five magical mystery questions right here. Magical. And they are fitness-related. When I say fitness-related, I mean <clears throat> loosely related. Or not related at all. Or, <laughs> or not related at all. That's entirely possible as well, as is the case today somewhat. So the way it's going to work is I'm going to throw out a question for you, and then we'll use your name as a buzzer. So shout out your name if you know the answer to the question, and I'll turn the question over to you and give you the opportunity to get it right. If you do, we'll reward you. If you get it wrong, we'll embarrass you. So no pressure. Yeah. Hey. So if everybody's ready, no let's, pressure. let's jump right into this. <clears throat> okay. Based on the amount of force generated compared to its size, what is the strongest muscle in the human body? Jason. Jason? Uh, gastronemus. <laughs> that is incorrect. Natalie? Natalie? Uh, the glutes? I'm sorry, that is incorrect as well. Kitty, do you have a guess? So it has the strongest force for the amount of size. That is, is that what I'm looking at? That is correct. Oh, that that should lead sense. you to the que to the hint that it might be a trick. Well, it sure <laughs> is, knowing you. Interesting. Goodness gracious. I'm going to say the, uh, the, oh, shit, uh, the hmm. pectorals. I don't know. I'm it? sorry. The correct answer was the tongue. Oh. oh. Oh, the tongue. Interesting. Good to know. See what we have to deal with every yeah, week? this is great. <laughs> Welcome, Natalie. This is our well, life. Okay. Um, <laughs> this one's less, less bizarre. This gland is responsible for the production of melatonin. Jason. Jason? Uh, shoot. Uh, uh, me melatonin? Pituitary. Kitty. Kitty. Adrenal. Do you have a guess, Natalie? Um, I know. Melatonin? Melatonin. I don't know. Yeah. I, I'm Sleep. not going to come up with it. I don't think it's going to come. It's the pineal gland. Pineal gland. Okay. Mm. All right. Not that. All right. Mm. So far, we haven't rewarded any points yeah. today, but that's quite all right. Yay! We'll, we'll keep going rocking. here. So. All right. Next question. Who discovered penicillin? Jason. Jason? <laughs> Sock. Discovered huh? penicillin. 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 Was it, was it yes. penicillin that? No, yeah, Sock did the. He was. The, um, yeah. yeah, I know that. Mm, Natalie. Natalie. Al. Uh. Something Fleming. I'll give it yeah. to you. Yeah. Ian Fleming. Alexander Fleming. Nice job. All good, right. Good job. She's on the board. She yeah. is. Wiping us. All right. Um, Only two to go. Yeah. Okay, now is when they get really random. Well, what is another name for corn? Kitty. <clears throat> Kitty? Maze. That is correct. <laughs> okay, and the final question of the day. Which sport was featured in the movie? The Big Lebowski. Jason. D oh. Bowling. Gosh dang <laughs> tie. it. Tie. Uh, tie. tie. Three-way tie. Three-way tie. Okay, it's a tie. Everybody's got a point. So <laughs> this is the last one here, and uh, what I'm going to do is we're going to throw out the buzzer rule. So the first person who throws out the correct answer uh, got it. will get it. And I'm so okay. happy that we got to the tiebreaker because this is the most random trivia question I've ever come up with. So, so you're not going to say the name? Or don't, don't say the say name. Just yeah, yell yeah. it out. Skip your okay. name. Just throw out the right answer. First one to hear, I'm going to give it over to you. All right. In the farmer in the dell... What did the cat take? No idea. What? The uh, song, da, da, The Farmer da, da, in the Dell? The Farmer in the Dell. Uh, what, what did the cat take? The milk. The milk? No. no. The mouse. The mouse. The rat. Uh, well, give it to Nat. She got mouse rat. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'd give it to <laughs> her. Nat wins. Nat, Nat wins. wins. Nat was rat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yay. <laughs> well, thanks for playing, Natalie. Did you say most random yeah, or most awesome. dumbest? <laughs> it was. <laughs> <laughs> I, with an attitude we like that, you're it. never going to win. We yeah. enjoy it. <laughs> Thanks for playing, yeah. Natalie. Yeah. Of course, it was fun. phenomenal to so, have your personality on here today. So we, this is awesome. We, we'll let you know when the podcast is available, but uh, okay. we'll get you back on again and talk some other stuff. And I want to talk to you great. after this, Nat. Thank you so much. I, that was so short and sweet, like super punchy. I loved it. So well, that was great. Yeah. we just want to support you and what you're doing because what uh, you are doing is needed in this world. And thank you for really doing it. Of you. 
to the to the hilt. I mean, you are really rocking and rolling with what you do, and I just want to give you babe. some dap, sister. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Coach Nat. Thank you. We'll talk to you soon, sister. Thank you All so right. much. See you guys. Bye. I liked her a lot, a lot, a lot. She so, was speaking my language. So, yeah. so she says the, uh, I mean, yeah, the short and sweet. And the, the reason for that, I hope, you know, it's, we've gotten feedback, not a lot. And we'd, we'd love feedback, podcast yep. at powerblock.com. Please do, send it out. But that, you know, I just think that y y an hour and a half, hour and 15 podcast why not just give somebody something that you know to think about? In her case, she gave a lot. Well, she okay. The one thing I loved the most is she said stress is yeah. literally a yeah. wall. Yeah. So to your results, selfishly, me, you, shocking, you shellfish. No. Yeah. Once I've once I realized that there's a nugget or two there, I don't want much more because just and it's when I say selfishly, I'm actually maybe I'm I'm being a. I know that's how people want. I think that's how people and would like that, right? I would agree with Versus, that. Versus, but I listened to that one gal that was like, I can't remember what. No, she gave us boom, boom, boom. Yep. I like that. I want to know what they do, why they yeah. do it well, and give us a couple nuggets yeah. like she did. Yeah. I mean, I love talking. And, you yeah. know, I, I know you and Dan obviously don't have a menstrual cycle, but I surely do. Yeah. And the fact that she was really just laying it out, real talk. Yeah. I really, really enjoyed her. Yeah. She's got a great YouTube, too. Yeah. Moving on. So. Up. so uh, yeah, in retrograde, Jupiter. No, I'm just <laughs> <kidding>. <laughs> so, <laughs> touche, baby. So, but by the way, <clears throat> no, never mind. So, no, that was great. I think Coach Nat would. I'm going to check her out. I think she's I got, think you should. You know, she's uh, talk with talk to Nat dot com. Yeah, if you want to set up a one on one. Also, fitaddictednutrition.com. Yeah. dot com. Yeah, and she does. She has a, a whole academy. Like she said, she does a whole year yeah. program with these women. And some of the testimony videos on yeah. YouTube are yeah. legit. She's yeah. making moves and, and changing lives. High fives, good vibes. You know, I would I did want to ask her, you know, the when she talked about and I'm I'm glad that she that was not I mean, that was very brave, I guess, for lack of a better word, for her to discuss her disorders and driving into the grocery store and all that stuff. And stealing food. I mean stealing wow, food, yeah. that is So the the first step in recognize in, in solving a problem is recognizing there is yep, one. Self awareness. So I wanted to ask her when she recognized there was a problem and then the next most the next question was often after that recognition, if not if not almost always, you need what's called help. Yeah. And and I wonder if she got that. And Taking how she radical got that. responsibility in some way. Do we know, this? Do we know the answer to that? I don't no. know. Yeah. No. I did want to ask her, like you said, you know, when did you start to take radical responsibility yeah, right. for... I'm sure she had an answer and it would have been a great one. I just, uh, at that point, I was yeah, like... Can we get her on again? Sure. I would love to have her on again. Yeah. I feel like there was so much more that we, we don't even need about. a reason. Yeah. No, yeah. no. We already have a reason. <laughs> Yeah, the, the, and next time we're in Colorado, <laughs> maybe we'll go see Nat Newhart. The, Thank you for getting Nat the, on. I'm really appreciative that you yeah. you had a female centric. I'm just trying to fill spots. Well, is that what it is? Come no. on, Jay. I thought you were doing this no, one. No, I'm me. trying to be. We're trying to we're trying to make a, a mix here. You know, we look at all these dudes' names. It's like, okay, well, we have a lot of dudes. Let's get let's get more females. And then if we're going to get females, strong on, female. Well, yeah, she's so strong. That would be only my only concern. And it's not a concern with her, but my only, the thing that I'm fascinated most about her is that. She's a uh, man. I can see how that's who you, that's who you, that's the only chance you have. If you're a type A CEO 100%. female, yes. you're going to have, because anybody else is going to fold. She's not going to. So Absolutely. Yeah. She's got a strong personality. Yeah. And I think that's why I was drawn to her like a yeah. moth to the flame big time. So I'm going to talk to nat.com. That's for sure. Thanks for having me, Kitty. Thank you, Jason. We'll see you next week. Peace out. <laughs>